So let's go into uh, looking at Poison distribution. Also with Poison, uh, Poison, Um, distribution gives you the area of opportunity and that area will always be um, will come from a continuous unit of an interval even though this is part of the discrete distribution but that discrete um, the, 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 the chart the discrete uh, variable will will produce a continuous value of some sort because we use an average and it, when we convert it to an average, you remember when the minute it takes up a decimal point, therefore it means it's something that you measure, it's something that is continuous. So the area of opportunity for a poison, it will be a continuous because of the interval time that it will have. Like the number of scratches on a car, on average, they might be on average 1,2. Um, the number of mosquito bites on average in a night, they can be five or they can be 3.5, something like that. So you, you, you use the discrete probability, but at the end it will also, because of the number of trials that you get, it will create a continuous value out of it. So let's see what are the other characteristics that you need to know. You need to know that for a Poisson distribution, the expected mean is the same as your average which is the same as your, your, your mu, your, your mean. And for the variance, your variance is the same as your mean. So you must also remember this. Your variance is the same as your expected mean, is the same as your lambda, which is the average, is the same as your average. They mean one and the same thing. And your standard deviation is always going to be the square root of your variance. So your standard deviation is the square root of your variance. So since you also expected to calculate this, uh, you are expected to know how to calculate them. So in, in your question, they will say on average, 3.5 emergency calls are required per hour for this police station. And these calls are following a Poison distribution. Sometimes they will give you this hint. They will tell you that it's a poison distribution. And then you will notice that you are using a poison or you need to calculate the poison um, characteristics. So, for example, if I need to calculate the mean of a poison, I know that the mean is the same as the average. So, my mean is 3.5. So, my mean will be 3.5. And if I need to find my variance, I know that my variance is the same as the mean, therefore my variance will be 3.5. And my standard deviation is the square root of your, 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 your variance. So my standard deviation will be the square root of 3.5, which gives me 1, 8. 8, 7. 8, 7. One comma eight seven, and that is the poison distribution. Calculate the variance of the statement above. What will be the variance? You can just say it out loud. What is the variance? The variance is the same as the average or is the same as your mean. This is the same as your average. So you must know all this. Average is the same as your expected value, is the same as your lambda, is the same as the mean. Your variance will be the same as the average, will be the same as the mean, will be the same as your expected. So what is the average? What is the, the answer that the question is asking? 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5.
by 25. That's how easy it is with Poison. Which one is the correct answer? This follows a poison distributed with a mean of 0 0.2 per day. Use the information to answer the following question. What is the value of the mean? 0 0.2. Based on the information that they gave you. What is the value of your standard deviation? Square root of 0 0.2. And which one will be the correct answer? Zero point four. So your mean is zero point two, and your variance is zero point two, which means the square root of your variance zero point four which is equals to 0 0.4. And you can choose which one is the correct answer from there. And that's all what they asking you. So if I do this in this manner. And that's how is how easy it is. Any question before we go into the probabilities? No. OK. If there are no questions, then let's look at how we calculate the probability of a Poisson distribution. This is the formula that you need to also know that calculates the Poisson distribution which gives you the probability of a poison. Also taking into consideration, remember when they say it's greater than or less than, or it is at least or more than, we didn't do that when we did the binomial. We need to also remember all that. So if they say it's greater than or equal, you will need to add all the probability. The exact, it's just that one probability, but the minute they have the less than and they also have the the greater than you need to add all probabilities. So for example, with this formula, if let's say our n is equals to four, and they're asking us to calculate the probability that x is less than or equals to three, what they're asking you is to calculate this formula three times, if we actually four times, because you have to calculate x is equals to zero plus x is equals to one plus the probability that x is equals to 2, plus the probability that x is equals to 3, because our n is 4 and our probability is less than or equals to 3, therefore it must also include 3. Then it means you have to calculate all of them. So it means you have to take this probability formula and calculate for x is equals to 0, calculate for x is equals to 1, calculate for x is equals to 2, and calculate for x is equals to 3, and add all of them up, where you know that they will also give you the value of your lambda, and your x will be represented by those values that you have there. So, easy? Yes, it's easy to substitute the values into the formula, but it's also easy to calculate the probability without even looking at this um, by by looking at the table, the poison table, which I think it's table E7 or E8. We can look at the, the correct table number just now. So the, the poison table looks different to the binomial table. With the poison table, it's broken down by the averages. So you will look at the top, there will be averages, your lambda values, and going down, there will be your x values. So for every lambda table that you will have, has its own corresponding x values. So for example, on this one, the x might end up at seven. The next one, the x might end up at eight. The next one might 
it's different. So you need to be very careful when you use the tables and not assume that they are the same for all of them. So let's say um, here we, we, we want to calculate that the probability of X is equal to two. So let's say our lambda, which is our expected many, may, uh, our expected uh, value is 0 0.5. So we go to the table, we go look for 0, 0,5, and we go to the side, we look for x is equals to 2. And when they meet, that would be the, prob the probability. Or you can use your formula, your x, your x is 2, and your lambda is 0, 0,5. So you just substitute the values and you calculate. Your factoria, on your calculator, you do have an n factorial. That is what we use to calculate this value. So you can use that to say n, and then you go second function and find your n factorial. All calculators have that. So you must look for that button on your own calculator. The e to the power, all calculators have it. It's called e to the power of x. So you can find it on your calculator and you will have to press the second function and then go find that e to the power. So on the financial calculator, for those who have the financial calculator, you press second function and you press the plus or minus button, but calculators are different, so you need to find it on your calculator to use that button. Otherwise, you don't even have to worry about that because you can use the table to answer the same question. Let's say the question was, what is the probability that x the same question. So find the probability that x is less than or equals to 2. So therefore, they're asking us to calculate the probability that x is equals to 0 because this table starts from 0 plus the probability that x is equals to 1 plus the probability that x is equals to 2 is equals to 2 because it says less than or equals to. So therefore, it means I must say 0 comma. 0, 0,6065 plus 0, comma, I can't see the values here. I think it's 0, 0,33. Three, three. I'm not sure. And the last one is 0, 0,075. 0, and you add all of them up, and that will give you your probability of less than or equals to, which is point. 6065 plus 0.3033 plus 0.0758, which gives us, oh, sorry, I didn't calculate it right, 6065 plus 0.3033 plus 0.0758, which gives us 0 0.986. And therefore, the answer for this probability will be 0, 0,9856. So let's look at the table. I'm just going to go out and show you the real actual table that you need to be using. Uh, so you're going to go to, and this is the table. So since I'm using this online, I must turn it and that's and that is the table, and it's called table E7 from your book. So let's say we want to answer the same question, not the same question, but let's say this is the question that we want to answer. Okay, a police station receives on average 3.5 calls. What is the probability that it will get at least six calls? So we go there. Uh, what is the probability that it uh, the station will get six calls. That is the exact probability. So it means we know that our lambda is equal to 3.5. So we need to look for the lambda 3.5 table, which is that this next table. So we go to this table. So we know that we're looking for lambda is equal to 3.5. And we are told that we need to find the probability 
the probability that x is equal to 6. It, are, it receives 6 calls. So we go here, we look for the lambda, and then we go and look for 6 and where they meet. That is the probability, and that probability will be 0, 0,0771. That's one way of doing it. What is the probability that the station will get at most four calls per hour? So this one says at most four calls per hour. And since it says at most, what is at most? If you can remember what we we, we spoke about earlier, what is at most? At most means less than or equal. So since we're looking for the less than or equal, so the lambda is still the same. So yeah, the question asked us, what is the probability that x is at most uh, four calls that are received? So at most less than or equals to four. Therefore, they're asking us to calculate the probability that x is equals to zero plus the probability x is equals to one plus the probability x is equals to two plus the probability x is equals to three plus the probability that x is equals to four. So I need to go and add all of them. Uh, cannot use the MSC race. Okay, so it means I must start, I must do all of them. So if I go to the table, so I must add all these values. So therefore, I must say oh, 0, 0.0. 302 plus for x is 1 is 0 0.1057 plus 0 0.1850 plus 2.2158 plus 0.1888. And that gives us the probability that X is at least or oh, at most, it gives us 0, 0,7255. And that's how you find the probabilities. If it says at least, then you will add all of them going down. If it's equal, you do the probability of exactly. And with that, then you have your exercise, unless if you have a question. Let's do one simple one. Uh, I will do this one with you again as well. So let's say we want to find the average. Uh, we told the average number of adults with ASD consulting with a neuropsychologist per day follows a poison distribution with a mean of 1.5. So they give us here a lambda, which is average mean because we know that he's doing a poison distribution. Use the information to answer the question. What is the probability that on a given day, a neuropsychologist will consult only one adult? So the question says only one adult. So if I look at this, as the probability, but it also gives me something funny here, which is looks like a formula. So I need to make sure that I choose the correct answer for this, because they're not asking me which one is the correct and which one is the incorrect. But since because they are not telling me if um, I must find which one is the correct answer, so I must assume one of the questions here is correct and the rest are not. And since I do not know which one is correct and which one is not, I'm going to calculate the probability as if like I am calculating the probability. So to start with, we can start with the formula. We can say we know what the formula is. So we know that the formula to calculate the probability that x is equals to 1, 
which is the most complex one, then the rest, if I can eliminate the formula, then I can start calculating the probabilities. So we know that the formula states the probability is e to the power of negative lambda times lambda to the power of x divided by x factorial. So I know what my x is and I know what my lambda is, then I can substitute into the formula. e to the power minus lambda of 1.5 lambda, oh sorry, my lambda is 1.5. So I say 1.5 to the power of x, and I know that my x is 1, and divide by my x factorial, which is 1 factorial. And if I look at this, yay, that was supposed to be my answer. So I could have started first with the probabilities and then come to the question and answer this. But that is not the case. So this is one, one way of finding out if this is the right, um, the right way of doing it. So the other side is, so let's say, let's assume that that question, this was not the correct answer that we're looking for. Then it means I must go find the probabilities. Instead of me calculating the probabilities by using this table, this whole thing, I can just go to the table. So I'll go to the table. And we go to the table. We go look for. You know that we're looking for lambda 1.5. So we go to the lambda table. So we know that we're looking for the probability that x is equals to 1 and our lambda is 1,5. So we come here, we look for lambda 1,5 and our x. And it says the answer is 0, 0, 0,3347. 0, 0, 0,3347. So you will go to back to your question and check if that answer is there. And if you look here, that answer is not there. Therefore, uh, the only answer that we were looking for was just number four. And that is what you're going to do also in the exam when you are given the question. Don't panic. You just need to apply step-by-step -step method of elimination for every question that you get. So let's see if you are able to answer this one question. Using the same information, your poison, your mean, which is your, your lambda, is 1.5. So what is the probability that at least seven? So yes, they're asking you to calculate the probability that X is greater than or equals to seven. So if you go to the table, you go to the table and delete that. And we look for lambda 1.5 again, and we look for the probability that X is greater than or equals to seven. Therefore, it means you need to calculate all of them. Only those ones in the blogging. And it should be easy. So you just need to go and find the probability that x is equals to 7 plus the probability x is equals to 8 plus the probability x is equals to 9 because there are only three values on there that are left. x is equals to 9. Do you have the answer? Should be easy. <laughs> To be number two. Yes, because x is equal to seven was zero comma zero zero one. X is uh, something like that. So let's go there. Uh, uh, x is equal to seven is zero comma is zero comma zero eight, and x is equal to 
8 is 0, 0,001 and x is equals to 9 is 0, 0,000. So then the answer will be just to add all the probabilities 0, 0,0008 plus 0, 0,0001 plus 0, 0,000, which gives you 0, 0,009. Okay, I'm not going to do this one for you. You need to do it yourself. Suppose that the number of daily fake news is a poison with a mean of 0, 0,2 per day. Use the information to answer the question, which one of the following statement is incorrect? The, oh, sorry. So you need to go find all the probabilities. So the first one, one fake, two fake, at least, three, at least four. So the first one will be the probability of x is equals to one. The second one you need to calculate is the probability that is equals to two. And the third one is the probability that x is greater than or equals to three. And you can continue. And when you're done, I just to gauge how many people are done, just say done, 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 so that I can know how many are done with the question. Done. All the done. Those who are done, try and answer this one as well. Uh, I think it will be the same as, yes. No, it's not going to be the same as anyone. Try and answer number four as well.
Are you still busy? Are you still busy? Yes. Remember number four, they are asking you, what is the probability that there are no fake news? The probability of X is equal to zero. That's all what they're asking you. Are you still busy? No, done. I'm done. Okay, so let's go back to the first one, which is exercise three. Um, we know what the average is. Our lambda is 0 0.2. The first question they asked, what is the probability that X is one? What is the probability that X is two? What is the probability that at least three? What is the probability that at least, at least five? So we're gonna go. And number five, it was asking what the probability, or number four was asking what is the probability that it is equals to zero. So I'm going to go to the table. We will work from the table. So I need to go to the probability. It was 0 0.2, not two, but 0 0.2. So I must go to the top of the table and go look for 0 0.2, which is this one. So number one, we were looking for the probability that x is equal to 1. And that probability of x is equal to 1 is 0, 0,1637. So you must remember all those values that you have. 1637. What will be the probability that X is equals to two? Zero comma zero one six four. Zero comma zero one six four. And what is the probability that at least three? It will be the probability that at least it's greater than or equals to three. Therefore, now here is the thing that I didn't say to you guys. You see, if I start from three and I go down, it means I must add one, two, three, four, five, five values. I can also find the same answer by just saying one minus the probability of X less than three, which means I will be finding the probability of one minus into bracket, the probability that X is equals to two plus the probability that X is equals to one plus the probability that X is equals to zero. So now I don't, instead of adding one, two, three, four, five values, I'm just only going to add one, two, three values. So which will give me one, minus the probability of 0.8187 plus 
0.37 plus 0 0.0164 plus those and there, which gives me 0 0.9988. One minus zero point nine nine eight eight because I need to add all of them, and that gives me zero point zero zero one two. If you have done this, you uh. If you have added all of these ones, they should give you the same as that. You can see that. So you can do the complement of the question that they gave you. So the next one, which was option four, it asked what is the probability that X is greater than or equal to five? And this one is easy because I'm also going to only add three values. So I can just go and add the probability that X is equal to five plus the probability that x is equal to 6, plus the probability that x is equal to 7, because it makes it easier. I'm only adding three values. And since I'm adding the three values, x is, equals, x is greater than or equals to 5, is equals to 0, because 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, plus zero cannot change from where it is. Uh, so if we go back to our question and see which one is the correct one or the incorrect one, so we can assume which one is the incorrect one because if I put this side by side, if I put it side by side, number one, the probability that there will be one phase if x is equal to one, so we can see that that was the correct one. The probability that x is equal to 2 is 0, 0.0164. That is the correct one. The probability that at least 3 will be fake, that is the correct one. The probability that there will be at least 5 fakes per day, which is equal to 0. We calculated that and we found that it's equal to 0. And which one is the incorrect one? None of the above is incorrect. And that will be your answer for exercise three. Then I also gave you exercise two. What is the probability that X is equal to zero? What will be that probability that X is equal to zero? It should give you that value there. That should be your value. So what did you get? What is the probability that x is equal to zero? Five. None of the above. And it also shows there. What is your answer? Sorry. What is the probability that there will be no fake news on any given day? None of the above. None of the above, because no fake news, it means X is zero. Therefore, when X is zero, it should give you 0, 0,8187. And that's how you answer the Poisson distribution as well. And that completes today's session. Thank you for joining. What we have learned, if I need to recap, you have learned how to do binomial distribution and how to do the Poisson distribution. Now, in terms of your, your assignment, you should be able, since I'm on your tutorial letter 101, I must go to your second semester. Where are we now? 
Okay. Let's reduce the size. So on the second semester, you should be able to do exercise question number one. We've done this yesterday. You should be able to do question number two, question number three. And after today's session, you should be able to answer question number four, question number five, question number six, question number seven, and question number eight, and question number nine, and question number ten, and on Friday, we will do question number 11. And so this we will only cover from Friday. So Friday. Okay, I don't have it open. So, but Friday we will cover normal distribution. And I think on Saturday we cover the uh, sampling distribution. I am not sure. I, I might have split it into two. I will have to look at the the topic that we're covering on Friday and Saturday. But you should be able to do up until question up until question number 10. Don't overstretch yourself. But if you are way ahead of the packs and you want to try with your little understanding that you have on some of the questions, go ahead and do them. Don't submit your assignment as yet. Just do them. And then when we do the exercises and do the activities after we've done, you can go and double check your answers. But for to, up until today, you should have all the questions up until question number 10. Um, if you are struggling to answer any of the questions from one up until 10, don't hesitate to ask. But it does not also stop you from asking any question if it relates to any of the, the questions up until question number 20. Is it 25? up until question number 25. You can go ahead and try and answer all of them, but don't submit as yet. Just do them and then ask if you are lost. And that concludes today's session. Any question you need to raise, I can stop the recording. Any questions? 